I'm actually going to put this inside of that uh, MT4 toolbox. I never posted anything there. I, th I don't think I did, but this is... What I'm going to put in there is this uh, these levels that are showing up on here. Um, this is, I took somebody else's indicator and then I just wrote it so that uh, this is based on daily pivots. These numbers are coming from the daily pivots. And this is another reason why all, all of this Fibonacci stuff is silly because this is, well, this is my Fibonacci, um, kind of. Uh, or it's just, I decided, well, you know, when this thing gets up in here, I want to sell more. When it gets down there, I want to buy more. And the current pivot, the center fulcrum here is, I think, right here. This range here is based on the pivots on the math inside this, inside this indicator. So zero point is somewhere in here. And then I added all these colors on. So when I look at the screen, I could just say, oh, yeah, I, I could be thinking about selling up here. They have the same thing yellow at the bottom. And this is like, say, your Fibonacci um, zone, because the idea that this is 618, everybody's already admitted that when you when you ask, when you put a gun to their head, they go, okay, well, 50% pullback would work too. And this is, when the volatility kicks up here, these would either be targets from your breakout or reversal points. Just veiled as any reversal point at anything. Look how it nailed it down here. And but when this was happening, these lines weren't here yet because this is based on current pivots that are unfolding now. So I'm playing back the one hour chart in strategy test room. I want to see this thing at the end of the day flip all these numbers. All these numbers will change inside that script. I'm going to test this on another. Um, I'm going to set the indicator to 15 minutes. I'm going to get a 15 minute chart because I want to see how it responds here. Now, if you're going to limit all your orders to putting hand place limits here, every time you see this indicator change, that's the only way to connect the two together. My dream was when I first wrote this indicator was that. Um, I, when I went to my buddy that works on a big mainframe computer, I said, surely you can have MetaTrader throw in sell limits up here uh, based on the pivot ATR. In other words, I'm using floor pivot not for the pivot, but for the fact that the mark, the math is tight there. We're expecting an explosion. We're expecting it to go up and down, completely balanced off of this fulcrum the, the, the balance area, the fair value, we can expect unfair, and we can expect unfair coming back to fair. That's the trade. You buy here, you bail here. That's the trade with limits and this indicator. It, you know, I'm looking at the stuff I wrote because I'm going through all this uh, stuff I wrote, and I'm saying to myself, when I first when I first spent the time to create this thing with all these colors in here and like where should I and I got many variations of this many you can um, and I also have ones that I try to get the maximum amount of uh, like you could write anything you want in here like sell I just put plus and minus so I'm writing scripts. I could maybe think, and I was just so hoping this guy could say, "Oh, dude, I put a, I got, I got the EA for this," but you can't. This can't talk to an EA apparently, and uh, people say, "Oh, you're making it too complicated." Well, then, yeah, that's why you don't want a robot driving your car. Look at all the crashes. At least you can blame it. Like with a human, you could blame it on the fact that they're texting, but with the robot, I mean, you're hoping this thing can get it right. But the robot's, dri the robot's uh, driving too careful. The robot doesn't break the law, so people are expecting people to break the law when they drive. So when the robot car slows down at a red or yellow light, people are rear-ending him because they're like, dude, everybody goes through a yellow. Now you see people going through red lights, maybe just where I live. And I'm like, okay, people, you know what? You're just, I thought I was impatient until I went driving. Like, So I'm an impatient trader, but when it goes to driving... I consider that to be riskier than trading. So this whole idea of risk is kind of ridiculous too. 
and uh, here you could do the color wheel trades I'm only I'm long through this whole thing we're gonna cut through we're gonna go full auction we come down here we rip up this is the dollar yen in September of 2015 but it doesn't matter this could be a five minute chart you're getting in on these handles but it lets you think that even if these aren't orders it gets your brain used to the fact that hey you know what what if those are sell limits up there and I just sell like a fucking idiot I'm not a sophisticated person you don't have to be I just heard this uh, interview with this lady talking about truckers you know what that would be my next the next student I'd want to have is a trucker I go dude you're picking up a load you're gonna dump it oh, okay you know these truckers are driving. They jackknife. I saw a trucker's uh, rig the other day. The guy tried to take an exit ramp in the rain. Oh, God, it was like ice. Man, he just cleared that thing out. He just took out, like, he sliced the, the trailer in half. It was ridiculous. But look at this. When the ATRs get small, this is the one-hour chart, the scalp bot could be thrown in limits on this volatility uh, like expansion volatility like uh, it's congested and uh, this would dial down these yellow lines will scooch in hopefully when I go back to the damn thing we've changed it but the end of the day is not here yet and I don't know if it's going to keep these objects on the screen another thing with the indicators there is one error when you compile it but it doesn't it's not a it's not a um, it's a warning not an error so but like the robots trading here behind me there's a little bit of a, a loss um, here so this is the daily and you're playing it back and I can't change the DM uh, I can't stretch this out here I have to fix the grid I want to show the um, is is the market uh, unfolds here I guess I'm not gonna be able to do any editing it's taking up too much processor time. I've got the smooth Akinashi. I've got the um, kitchen sink on this, which slows down the playback a little bit. I got the fastest playback possible. Oh, look, robot made some money. So, moving average crossover MACD. I'm using just so I can test the indicator. Um, it's the canned. There's two canned EAs that come with MetaTrader still, MACD, and I think it's Stochastics or something. But just so you can rehearse uh, trading. So if I would be buying right here, right? Who wouldn't be buying right there? It's a low ATR. It's a green. You could just say, oh, it's going uptrend. But hey, you know what? Maybe it's maybe this is the balance area, and they're going to smash it down. And maybe these are your trailing stops. So if you're not even trading this thing, if you're running this template, which is, I'm just po post. I'm just posting this one indicator as the the, um, the grid thing. I'm all about grid trading. I mean, it seems to work in the power grid business. And sure, there's outliers. You know, there's outliers, people that, you know, they're spending a lot of money running a line to some guy. But if you're living in the city, you know, this is the noise. This is the market. This is, oh, a couple pips up, a couple pips down, until something really starts to break off from the, from the crowd and you see markets go into historical prices so we've all seen this um you know the a currency that uh, that's the argument for a trend of course it depends what time frame you're on some guy said i in my video i contradict contradicts myself but only because i'm trying to communicate with people that i know already have cliches in their head that you know retail traders lose money blah 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 and you know you just uh all that stuff is just, you know, really you just, um, you know, th this is the conventional terminology. And apparently people are trading at the market. Uh, you know, they're, they're like, oh, I'll buy right now. So if I would have bought here in a breakout, it would be different than buying it on a, um, a stop. I'm not going to get to that screen. So the... Um, we just have to watch this thing hopefully but I don't think it changed any of the uh, values here okay so the day closed it didn't change so it's not updating but um, I'm gonna switch the time frame here so I'm gonna re I'm gonna just do a 15 minute 
So I'm going to get it to the settings that are running super dynamic. Now you can change them in here. If I can get to the damn uh, the screen. So this stuff was fun when I first came up with the idea because I thought, well, I'll just... Um, uh, surely somebody could just hook an EA up to these lines. And maybe it didn't change its... Um, it's called Spectrum. So I had to come up with names for this stuff. I've got other versions of this that might run better. So this is, I'm put this toolbox, and uh, here's the settings I, oh, apparently I didn't change these. So, geez, okay, here's the only, there's only three settings here, but I sent everything to uh, H1 because I didn't want to um, wait for the updates naturally. And so when I'm playing back and rehearsing entries, so let's say you were scalping this thing. up, set this to one hour. Maybe it's going to update on the fly. I think last time I just did this, it just crashed the whole platform. It's a little bit too much to run a strategy tester in the background while... Um, you know, I'm going to just make everything H1 because I think I had it set like that once. And I kind of uh, just w w when I couldn't connect this to an EA, I kind of just abandoned the whole thing. Now, if I was running this on the yen pair. So here's where I set all the ratios. And this is where it's doing the math. And this is talking to the colors. But you'll be able to see the, the reference to the colors in here. And the levels, and I made the white is the, uh, or zero level would be uh, the pivot, which is light blue. So there's three, there's a pivot zone here. And this plus doesn't mean plus two pips, it just means, uh, and then I, you can see where it's uh, in quotes, that means it's going to show up as an object on the screen. Let me see if this uh, is going to crash it. If it's going to wipe out the indicator or not. Oh, look at this monster sell off. So I'm just playing back the uh, the yen here. Look at this perfect called that top. Look at that damn indicator I made. Okay, it's not updating real time. But look at this expansion in ATR. Now, hit you bought here at support. How'd that work out for you? Look at this trap. Wow, that's incredible. Now, the 100-pip grid is running. Okay, I don't know if we got a rewrite. Okay, so it's rewriting now, see? Now, check out the ATR expansion now. Look where it's telling me to put orders. It, it's so, this is the pivot area now. The pivot area just became, because it changed the settings to one hour. But look how it calls this at the 100-yard line. So the ATR of this pivot... These are the uh, right here is zero level. Now five above looks like a good place to uh, ha if it would have sold up there. And look at now you got to change your whole trade plan. If you used to running a twenty pip stop, now oh looky, now this is the projection of the next level. Now it's too late to get in on stops. It's about oh my god, let's get in at minus five just for a scalp because look at now the ATR is out of control it's not gonna let me fix the scale on here so but it should update every hour now so after this big plunge down then we could reassess change the orders throw in different grids see boom all of a sudden now we put in orders at all those handles you have to hand do it though i cannot get this thing to talk to a robot uh, to, to an e to save my life and i haven't done a lot of videos on this so i haven't really gone hunting for a programmer but i guess i'm going to put this one on this where everybody's on this uh it's called up load or something I'll put the link in this uh, thing. It's called, um, God, it's, and they just made it so you got to pay and stuff now. 
But as all EMT4 programmers are there, and uh, I think I made a, I saw a guy on YouTube that was a programmer, and I said, hey, can we do this? He's like, dude, you're being too complicated. Oh, okay. So the ATR there is established off of the, the center pivot, and if we got in at these blue lines, you see you made money right on the scalp. So like I just did that video on the limit orders, this is the, okay, now we got to put, now we, hopefully we're out of that trade. Another hour passed, now we got to go in this wide, based on that last ATR. Do you think it's going to smash down here? And if you're just going to trade on these pivots, this is the scalper's world, and then, okay, yeah, maybe it could smash down here tonight in five hours. And now I'd be thinking, like, okay, I got a reason to put an order here at a random level that lasts eight hours. And if, and if this ATR changes in the next hour, I'll have another reason to just, and you could turn off all of these things and just leave. You could say only get on, on the, um, the yellows. Now the yellows, you might have a 50 pip stop. In the blues, you have a smaller stop. So you just, this is a way to rationally discern where we're at now. Like, you know, that you are here map. You always look at those maps and they go, you are here. And I'm like, yeah, where the fuck am I? Like, I'm lost. The map's doing me no good unless I can say, you are here. Oh, okay, so then if I turn right, I'm going to go here, left goes here. I can't get this ATR. There's too much math going on, but if I could stretch this out, you could see the dynamics of the market changing every hour on this thing. So I'm going to run this real time on the um, the uh, now this you would have to hand place big orders. I'm not going to um, put baby orders in at the um, or I'll put a crop of orders around that line. So if you put a 10k in. You might put a 10K and pepper it between these zones. I wish I could speed up the playback or even even zoom out. So we haven't got enough data in here yet. This I got the fastest playback you can get. Look how it called that bottom. That's what I'm talking about. But this is the ATR that's on the whites. And maybe you maybe you buy in the blue and you sell in the white. Uh, so you pre uh, the the uh, pivot's going to paint every hour the the uh, last known one hour volatility, and really it's like if the market dojis up, these things are going to come together. These yellows are going to be right up tight, and maybe they become breakouts. So you know it's going to tighten up. And you're like, oh man, targets are really shallow now. This is the end of the session in the U.S. market right now. So I want to get another, uh, this is, you know, you have to have, I guess, be excited about your indicator on some level. Uh, this is a, um, you know, like there's so many ways to do it. And you could pick, um, if you're a scalper, you might put in super tight ones. And if you're a swing trader, you would make these so broad that, or you would just tame the, I think it's better to keep the same ATR, I mean the same math here, and just go from the 1 hour to the 2 hour to the 3 hour to the 4 hour. Although you cannot test it inside a MetaTrader playback, I don't think so on the, I haven't tried it, and probably won't run in 2 and 3 hours, but the 1 hour is plenty. If you're going to, uh, if your order, if your limit orders only last an hour or 4 hours, then it becomes easier to think in terms of, okay, that order's going to be for 12 hours or a whole day, and maybe you're running this on, um, you could run another template called uh, Daily Pivots, but I don't think, it, you know, at least, at least uh, you'd be all done placing those orders for the day. Either buy or sell, it wouldn't matter. So you could trade this, trade, trade this as a non-directional system where you have sell limits up there and buy limits on the yellows, and you're gonna, it's gonna cash out at the blue near the center of the pivot. At the moment you drop that, of course, every the conditions change every hour. Or you could set the indicator to look at every 15 minutes of data. 
and now you're going to be literally having to just press buttons because you're not going to hand place orders five pips apart i don't know unless you just really are fast you you, you put you can't put single drops in um i've done it when the news came out i'm like oh, i got a single drop in my hand and i'm waiting to drop it on the chart the market's going ballistic and i'm like yeah we're gonna buy here and uh yeah, when the market goes just nutsoid, and this is a this is still I got a hundred pip grid here behind there. I don't see any indicators. So it's a hundred pips, believe it or not. Even though this is so this is a two hundred pip range from yellow to yellow right now. Pretty incredible. It did not delete this um, object. So these objects stay behind. You don't have to have these objects on. You can just, or no, these these do delete. Sorry, these. But um, it's offset here. I chose where these paint. It looks like this is ancient. This is buried in history. But um, there's like in the code there, there's how many bars back you start to paint this stuff. So here comes into the Asia session with an Asian currency. So we have buy limits here at the retest. Look how this thing picked the retest. Okay, now now you can't even see it. So here's a dynamics that you can't even, it's not even plotting here. I don't know if it crashed it. I can't, I can't, um, maybe it's in there, I can't stretch it out. I could I could have crashed it just by opening this up and looking. I'll reload the template. Let's see what happens. No, I guess I wiped it out. Oh well, but um, that's because I'm in playback mode. But you get the idea here. Let me. I'd have to start the whole uh, thing over. Let me go to let me go to the euro dollar. Let's see what that looks like. I had the Canadian dollar on here, but um, it crashed. the uh, The spread's too wide because news came out, and I think it just destroyed the uh, small time frame. I got let me see euro USD on here. Yeah, this broker is pretty weird. One thing these brokers never do is uh, standardize their um, the list of their instruments. I don't see it on here. You're a Swiss. Let's probably crash it. So I'm going to set the spread to 100 pips here so it doesn't crash. So this is uh, the look back to the... Um, so I'm just trying to get this indicator to run. Uh, so I can see how dynamic it is. Now if I put on the 4-hour chart, that might be a better fit. If you don't want to be putting too many orders in. So the de order density, just go to just reduce your trading... Uh, of course, it's not no fun if you're a scalper to swing trade the four-hour chart. But at least this is a, a repeatable. Um, like if you always know that you're going to buy and sell at those zones far away from the current price, then at least you can have something that you know uh, you can hold on to. You can see it on the screen. You know it's telling you exactly where to put your order. So, uh, and if you see the market go to that level, maybe you're buying at the market. You know, you're like, okay, but that means that you had to draw a line there. It's better to place the order because otherwise you got to draw a line there because if this thing's going to update every hour, that line's going to be gone. You're not going to. So that trade plan, the idea of front running the market, just doesn't exist. So it's better to put a four-hour order out there. And say, okay, well, you know, I'll, 
I'll put this order here for four hours and pick that pick that thing up on that eight based on that ATR. So ATR is very small. Um, there's no there's no uh, reason to put an order because it's not gonna it's not gonna come up. It's not gonna be a uh, you know there's no um, signal or there's no direction there's no uh, order placement zones coming up on the indicator. But this is different than, uh, so it's kind of like uh, trend line, trend channel projections up and down. Uh, the, uh, but yeah, it's just, uh, it's fun to play with on the weekend and uh, watch it, watch how the indicator behaves with the market. And another thing that's nice is it's not an indicator that's on the bottom of the screen where you can't really place orders on your RSI. There is one broker out there in the States that lets you put orders on the indicators. But um, Visual Trader, Visual Trader is the people that wrote the uh, program. So as soon as I put this template in here, it's going to uh, really choke the speed of this thing. So I put an enormous spread on that. I don't know, I guess the indicator is not going to run on this time frame one hour Swiss yeah I think I, I think I uh, screwed that up or maybe the math isn't right for this spread hmm. anyways it does work on all the other non if I put it on, here's a British pound. That's always a bad sound if you just wrote a, a really killer robot. Here's what it looks like in the uh, one hour time frame. So this is ba so it's it, if I switch time frames, it's not going to change the math look at how it just picked this bottom isn't that just amazing it's just amazing the one hour ATRs I'm gonna to try to set it for three hours when the market opens and I'm gonna place orders another thing you can tell all your orders that you had placed so here is the one hour time frame with the thing set to one hour look how it just I'm telling you this look at how this thing picks the uh, so you know you're in the middle of fair value right now you just know it um, this is four hours of noise this is the city this is the country this is the country this is uh, China this is uh, United States where all the way to China look how this thing nails the top of that what, are you kidding me forget about it let's see how it does on the uh, one hour uh, one hour uh, euro dollar there we go again look at this thing nailed that uh, nailed that uh, breakout floor I'm telling you so I'm gonna put this magic indicator in the toolbox so when you switch time frames Look how it's holding on to this for you. You can set it to four hours so you don't over trade it, of course. But see, this isn't, I changed time frame, doesn't change the update on the, so on the daily chart, you're like, wow, look how it nailed the top of that, the bottom of that wick. So this thing's melting through the floor. Everybody's still bearish. So this is what I wasn't able to do in strategy tester. It was a little frustrating. Stretch that out. So you can see where you put your buy limits here based on the one hour. Um, and this is the targets. If you're if you're buying here, your targets might be here. You could either place this line or place an order up here to sell if you think that that's a good place to sell for a trend continuation. I'd be scared shitless to do that trade, but you're certainly welcome to do that trade. Uh, <laughs> he's to his own right 
Uh, so this is, and unfortunately these will move. If you double click and move, these will move. You have to refresh the chart to get the indicator to come back to normality. But here's the obvious floor. Bearish, bearish, bearish. Uh, creeper gear sell off, not the down gust wind you would hope for. I guess this was the down gust after they trapped all these bozos. All the breakout traders were trapped here and then raped. Classic trap and rape. But yeah, I like this indicator. Uh, I talked, discussed this with somebody on Skype and nobody bit, nobody liked, nobody said, oh, fucking great idea. So um, I'm going to do it myself, I guess. Uh, it's the Life's a Do It Yourself project in the end. Look at that top become a bottom right there at that top. Look how silly that is. One hour charts, um, one hour grids. Uh, if you got into this plunge, I'm sure at this point, now here the ATRs would have gone ballistic. And you can see after this one hour close, uh, you can't see it, but you can only imagine that there'd be a limit grid down here to go and swing trade it. Same thing here, uh, uh, quiet market, um, big explosion up big explosion up here to put sell limits up there that never filled so you're you're you're, you're long by default and this is the uh i guess you'd have to call it like a pivot expansion uh, from a low atr the atr is kind of low right here on the one hour uh, this is the four hour go to the one hour and uh so this double bottom right in this pivot zone and just pick any currency, right? Dollar CAD, um, load the template. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just uh, funny, funny as hell. So I really took this guy's indicator and really jacked it up. I mean, it used to say resistance up here and support down here. You could do that too, or you could say buy and sell. I just wanted to do it for the, uh, I marked off only certain numbers and put every other number in there. Also, if you can see the spread, when the spread is maybe um, another qualifier for, the uh, thing is maybe your spread has to be within these blue dotted lines or you can take out some of these lines or add it. You can see in the code, these colors show up. I just put two forward slashes in it, recompile, and it won't, it'll just come back up, it'll just, it'll choke off the other handles. Look how it called this uh, bottom here. So this is like a, you could set this to Fibonacci levels, so that what it is, is it's like, instead of redrawing a Fibonacci tool, it's going to redraw every hour, or every four hours, or every day, based on, um, you can make this um, based. It's a Fibonacci expansion. It, you can make Fibonacci expansion out of it because you can't. It's um, for the retracement back in. This is certainly to me more viable than looking at the apex, the end of a triangle pinpoint for, oh, I'm going to get in here. Well, that's constantly changing. If you really are a batwing trader, on a 15 minute chart, you're redrawing this shit. If you're on a five minute chart, which is we the scalpers entry batwing, you're like, okay, well, but where am I my order? Well, I gotta wait, I gotta get out of the fib tool and all that. So this would just be a way of uh, making that easy. You know, four hour, you'd have sell limits up here, dollar CAD. So the dollar CAD, this is the big breakout finally after we've crushed everybody's nuts into the ground and oh, I guess if you're a girl trader you know the the other body parts but uh, if you're trying to get on the long train right and this is the classic stop hunt we've seen it a million times a Tuesday and everybody's like wow I mean look it went up yeah I know you with you with, you with the 300 pip stop you're still long hey, with the 300 pip stop you're still long so we're first time we're coming up into this void, but we want to sell up here on these yellows. 
and if this was set to the daily I'd have no problem putting them up there because I'm in this sort of trade plan I could repeat over and over look at the look at the weekly so we we fill in this big uh, void up here that we've been trying to fill for um, uh, I think it just moved my whole screen um, grab the wrong side of the uh, screen here but look at this uh, void and this is we're coming right on the, on the doji pivot here look at that thing come smashing up but it's the scalpers world people are going to sell up there look at the four hour look at this sell here the only up breath in this whole thing here's the big smash and grab why don't they just say I'm sure this could be a cipher why don't people just say listen dude and you see this bottom just put your orders in well I put an order there and then they stop me out okay it's dollar cad it's 200 pips from here to here anyways I'm gonna post this as a comment this indicator in this video and then I would put in that tool thing because I never put anything in there and I know people are in the indicators there's no getting around it it's gonna happen not that you can't trade this from the trend line break here on close or the trend line break of the wicks or the fact that I'm just gonna sell every hour this is the four hour chart every all blue I'm a seller and green I'm a buyer but if I'm not I don't want to chase this thing I'm like okay I'm put sell limits up there and buy limits below when the market quiets down if these are my buy limits to go with the green that would be your um, your buy trap so if you were bullish uh, you're like oh yeah we're going up now after we've just crushed everybody and uh, I'm just gonna hit hit the buy key and everything's biased to buy on stops or limits and this is going to tell me how tight my limits would be and this is constantly changing every hour's dynamic um, pivot levels that are extensions into space into the unknown based on the one hour chart here and I'm sure right here there was some um, sell limits up here that if you didn't have scalps built into that you're getting killed but maybe maybe you're not going to uh, um, take that risk but this is a typical breakout and you could see a pullback uh, here you would have gotten stopped out maybe or scalped or you're you're long on these pullbacks and this is why you could not live by limits alone or stops alone this is going up and when this pull pull back here you just say the whole time this is green you're pulling buy stops because this is the one hour chart you're like okay self stop self stop a little trap here the same time you got these limits running there so maybe half of your money is in limits and half of your money's in stops the other way to do it is um, when this gets to a certain level and of course you'd have to just run a price grid underneath here to say okay well that's 50 pips away from here let's run the 50 grids let's run the 100 grids let's put in buy stops in case they don't come back and fill me let's put in sell limits so you're long into this thing um, to be dual trader like you can you can play in a band where they're playing really loud and you can play in a band where they're playing really quiet but you're actually you're a musician so if you're a trader um, instead of wasting time with Gartley's you would say well can I be a breakout trader and can I can also be a limit trader so I can be a stop entry trader a trend trader trend continuation to me is you're jumping on the trend in the time frame that you can uh, pick get picked up in the stream especially if you're a scalper you're just gonna be like okay I'm just buying the market like I'm looking at a five minute chart with a one minute chart and I'm gonna sync my time frames and nail the order but 
you could be a loser just as well well wouldn't you if you're a scalper wouldn't you want to have like a a grid that buys every three and a half pips for the next uh 20 pips deep for a scalp that you're using based on the um the current new atr you're going okay well look the wheels are coming off let me press this button let me capture that insanity and look at this turnaround this is a one hour classic auction smash and grab where we come down here now if you saw this real time it would be completely different if you had orders sitting here on the four hour chart because you're watching this happen this is a hundred pip smash down to the hundred up pause top becomes the bottom see you buy drift and then here obviously if you look left there's we're going into history just like we are on the euro dollar duh this guy that did this uh video about oh well there's keywords being triggered uh really look it broke out it pulled back this is as much as the bears were interested i mean this is much interest in selling was here is the breakout pulls back to the uh, breakout here but yeah i mean how could this robot watch the canadian news the what you're in chemtrail world um anyways this is the uh magical holy grail indicator that i wrote 